Do you feel that, um, just building up on that, do you feel like in terms of ethics, Yes. I think there is, I mean, an ungodly amount of conversation about artificial intelligence and ethics. Yeah. Like, to me, it's quite amazing, and it feels like we are kind of ahead of the topic in a way. I mean, there were some events that made people think about, you know, that time when, um, was it Microsoft releasing the chatbots in, on Twitter? Sure, yes. And then it started saying, you know, profanity and all kinds Yo. of things. And so there were events that triggered that conversation Yo. more. But I feel like, you know, as, you know, as part of the species, as humanity... We are trying, you know, this time with this technology, we are trying to stay ahead and to think about ethics before it kind of becomes too late. Do you think there's some truth to that or are we not thinking about um, ethics enough? I suppose it depends on what, again, it's sort of a, a, a definitional problem, I think. If you're talking about are we considering that we need to embed emotions like empathy in artificial intelligence are we thinking that we need some sort of moral code by which mm -hmm. ais are created i don't think we're doing that i mean there are sort of foundations like i think the good ai foundation is one group which is very interested in this area um there are some researchers who have talked a lot about this but i don't think that that's currently part of certainly not the legal framework around kind of developing artificial intelligence mm -hmm. um I think that, I mean, and then there are sort of offshoot issues. I think that a big one that often when I'll do an interview about AI, people immediately jump to the kind of the Skynet hypothesis as being the kind of the big yeah. threat from AI. The idea that, you know, it's going to be sort of, you know, robots with Austrian accents and leather jackets marching yeah. down the street and that's the big threat from them. I think that the impact, for example, on employment is going to be enormous. And I don't think that that's something that has been properly addressed um yeah. yet and i think we're already at a stage where that is becoming an issue for a lot of people you know that for, for, for machines to replace people in employment doesn't take us reaching any kind of tipping point in terms of machine intelligence yes. often it's just a financial decision so i i, I think there's definitely thoughts uh, there's definitely some, some interesting kind of thinking around the ethics in AI and it helps the fact that a lot of these issues are questions which have been explored by philosophers for hundreds of years so there's a yeah. long kind of ethical framework in which a lot of them um, sit but in terms of whether or not um, I would agree that we're kind of well ahead of um, where we need to be I'm, I, I, I'm not sure I think that there's still a lot of work to do in that area. Um, because we, we're we're also only just reaching, there's that line from Jurassic Park, isn't there, about, you know, you spent so long thinking about whether you could do something that you didn't stop and think whether you should do something. Yes. For a lot of AI's history, the big kind of bottleneck or the big limitation has been the fact that these things just couldn't, they didn't work outside of lab conditions. And now we're at the point at which a lot of these technologies work and they can work very, very effectively. And I think in some cases, there's this sort of temptation, maybe, you know, the capitalist temptation or whatever it is to kind of rush out technologies and kind of be first to market with something without thinking about maybe the implications mm -hmm. that it's going to have. And then you can get into whole arguments about, you know, does a company that's going to put people out of work have any moral responsibility not to do that? And, you know, there are some really kind of thorny, thorny questions yeah. in there. I mean, you mentioned AI and jobs, and I, yeah. feel, I feel like it, it has been becoming, even though you think it's not as addressed as yeah. it should be compared to, you know, this singularity kind of scenario. Sure. We're quite far from yeah. yet, it seems. Then talking about AI and jobs, uh, sort of short to medium term, yeah. there is a lot of research about you know which jobs are going to be redundant, yeah. which jobs are going to be displaced. If we could take a conversation a bit further, and if I could ask you, whose responsibility is it to prepare the workforce yeah. to the world that's coming? Is it the university or schools? Yeah. Is it the people themselves? Yeah. Or is it the companies they're going to be working at to put those procedures in place? Who is in the best place to actually figure this out? Yeah. 
it's interesting. Um, I mean, there, there's this kind of great story about, um, I'm going to sort of mess up the details of this, but it was sort of a few hundred years ago, and there was an inventor who uh, came up with some, I think it was a, an automatic, uh, a sort of so, so, some kind of automated loom, some kind of automa automated weaving machine. And he went to visit uh, the, the Queen of uh, England and tried to secure a patent for it. Yeah. And she turned him down on the, on the basis that this invention he had come up with was going to put a lot of her sort of subjects, I suppose, out of out of work. And you would never get that situation now, you know, a sort of patent's not going to be denied because it's going to have a large sort of harmful impact on the workforce. So I think a lot of it, it you're, you're right, it's a complex issue too. I mean, I think that a certain amount of responsibility needs to be with the individual in terms of being aware of these technologies and being able to kind of there, there are exciting opportunities. I mean, this is what we'll see with AI. It's, it's, it's not going to be something that's going to be bad for everyone. It's probably going to sort of speed up a process which is already happening, which yeah. is the kind of the hollowing out of the middle class and the sort of entrenchment of a two-tier society. Yeah. So on the one hand, you're going to get people that are going to be put out of work by machines. On the other hand, there are going to be enormous opportunities for people that can be in that, I think, Mackenzie work, who's an interesting... Um, critical theorist so it talks about the kind of the vectoral class the people who control the algorithms and clearly there are you know the mark zuckerbergs of this wor world yeah. and anyone who's able to kind of harness these technologies there are some amazing opportunities so part of it needs to be on the individual um i think that possibly in terms of regu the whole sort of regulatory debate i think is kind of interesting because i don't think that you you're never going to be able to sort of stymie innovation you're never going to be able to stop this sort yeah. of process from um happening and trying to kind of artificially do that i know that for example bill gates has talked about a robot tax where you would tax companies for replacing humans quite a topic, um yes, yeah. and then there's you know the idea of kind of uh, universal basic income which I think is another big solution which is often put forward as a kind of a, you know that would obviously be a sort of a governmentally induced uh -huh. uh, a, a scheme I don't know where I, I, I have my reservations about that I do think that there are one interesting idea I have heard is the idea that maybe there needs to be some kind of redressing of the balance um, in terms of ownership of data